In this lecture, we will discuss few principles and concepts and terminologies when it comes to risk management, starting with the project risk, which we, are, which we defined earlier, just to confirm it's an uncertain event or condition that, if it occurs, has a positive or negative efforts on project objectives. So it's either positive, an opportunity, or negative as a threat. It might happen, it might not. It's an uncertain event. Now, what's the risk management? It can be defined as systematic and proactive approach to taking, to taking control over projects by understanding or decreasing uncertainties. It's not a one-time only process. It's repeated throughout the project life. So it's systematic and the most important, it's a proactive approach. We want to take control over the project. We don't want to be controlled by the project and the uncertainties there. So the aim of conducting risk management activities is to reduce uncertainty. So what's uncertainty? Uncertainty is the lack of knowledge about an event that reduces confidence in conclusion drawn from the data. When you are not sure about information or about an event, this is uncertainty. If I tell you it might rain heavily three weeks from today and you need to remove any material stored outside of your building, so this is, this is uh, an uncertain event. I'm not sure. The forecast says that there might be heavy rain after three weeks, but we are not sure. This is uncertainty. Whenever there is an uncertainty, there is a potential risk. What's an opportunity? It's a positive set of events or a risk that, if occurred, will have a positive impact on project objectives. So... A risk can be an opportunity or a threat, an opportunity with positive impact on project objectives, while a threat with negative impact or effect on project objectives. Now, there are two types of risks. Business risk, which is a risk of gain or loss, or pure risk, which is the risk of loss only. Uh, I, I had one question in my PMI RMP exam. It was a simple one, asking about... Uh, the, the probability of having a fire in your building, is this a business or pure risk? It's a pure risk. You cannot have any gain from a fire. So business risk, profit or gain or loss. While pure risk, it's a risk of loss. And an identified risk has two key dimensions. Any identified risk should have two key dimensions. The first one is the uncertainty, described using the term probability, sometimes likelihood. So uncertainty, probability, and likelihood, three terms for the same concept. What's the percentage of this risk occurring? 40%, 30%, 50%. This is the probability or the likelihood or the uncertainty. The second dimension is the effect, described using the term impact, and it's known sometimes as consequences. What's the impact of this risk? A loss of 500,000 US dollars, saving in three weeks or two weeks of the project schedule, this is the impact. So it is something like the first name and the, light and the last name of any human. Any risk should have the probability and the impact identified. Now, what are the four risk factors? Starting with the probability, which is the likelihood that a risk will occur, the impact, which is the effect on the project if the risk occurs, expected timing, when during the life of the project the risk might occur at the beginning of the project at the end of the project this is the expected timing the frequency of the event how many times the risk might occur during the life of the project these are the four risk factors probability impact expected timing and frequency of the event now what are the risk acceptance levels known sometimes as the risk attitudes how is your organization thinking about risks? What's their appetite toward risks? So it can be identified, the risk acceptance le levels, as one of these three terms. Starting with the most high-level one, which is the risk appetite, it's a general high-level description of the acceptable range of risk, so it's very high level. The risk tolerance, it's more detailed than the risk appetite. It's the measurable amount of acceptable risk. It's measurable. The risk threshold, the last term, and it's the most specific one, it's the specific point at which risk becomes unacceptable. So how you are going to identify the risk acceptance levels for a key stakeholder in your project or your organization, 
through using one of these terms, the risk appetite, the risk tolerance, or the risk threshold. The risk threshold, for example, your company cannot accept any risk with an impact of more than $10,000 US dollars loss. This is a risk threshold. So any risk with higher impact than, than $10,000 US dollars loss, in this case, you should escalate it and refer back to your management. This is an example of the risk threshold. Usually in projects, risk exists at two levels. Project risk management should consider addressing both risks. Starting with the individual project risk, which can be defined as uncertain event or condition that if it occurs, has a positive or negative effects on project objectives, it can affect the achievement of the project objectives. The overall project risk, it's the effect of uncertainty of the project as a whole. We are not talking about individual risks, we are talking about the project as a whole, arises from all sources of uncertainty, including individual risks, representing the exposure of the stakeholders to the implications of variations in project outcome, both positive or negative. So you will deal with individual project risks and overall project risks. Now risk attitudes, which which is a similar term to the risk acceptance level. The risk attitudes of project stakeholders determine the extent to which an individual risk or overall project risk can matter. And this is what I told you earlier. It's important to understand the risk acceptance levels of the stakeholders and the organization or their risk attitude. This will help you know how to deal with specific risks on the project. How risk is regarded is usually strongly influenced by an organization's culture different organizations are more or less open and this often impacts the way risk management can be applied so it's important to understand risk attitudes of the key stakeholders on the pro in the project and your organization as well it's an important component of risk management it's the first part you need to identify when you kick off the risk management activities the risk attitude should be documented as part of the risk management plan these attitudes should be identified and managed proactively throughout the risk management processes. The amount of information available about project risks will usually increase as time goes on. Some risks will occur while others will not. New risks will arise or be discovered, and the characteristics of those identified might change. As a result, the project risk management processes should be repeated and the corresponding plans progressively elaborated throughout the project life. The frequency and depth of reviews and updates will depend on the nature of the project, the volatility of the environment in which the project is being implemented, and this is similar of the degree of complexity and the innovation in your project required will, will, will direct the amount of efforts you need to spend on the risk management activities. It will also direct the frequency and depth of reviews and updates needed when it comes to risk management. Project risk management success relies heavily on communication throughout the processes. Risk identification and analysis depend on comprehensive input from stakeholders in a project to ensure that nothing significant is overlooked and that risks are realistically assessed. So there is, as I mentioned earlier, strong relationship between risk management and communication management. You should have open and honest communication regarding risk management activities. Communication of the results of the project risk management process should be targeted to meet the specific needs of each stakeholder and should be reflected within the overall project communication strategy. So risk-related communications will be documented as part of the communication management plan and the communication strategy. This demands effective and honest communication from the project risk management process to the rest of the project team and other project stakeholders. Now, the project manager has overall responsibility for delivering a successful project which fully meets the defined objectives. When it comes to risk management, the role of the project manager may include, first of all, encouraging senior management support for project risk management activities. It's the responsibility of the project manager to convince or seek the support of senior management to gain uh, their support and to 
help them realize the value of conducting risk management activities, developing and approving the risk management plan. So it's the responsibility of the project manager to develop and approve the risk management plan, facilitating open and honest communication about risk within the project team and with management and other stakeholders, approving risk response strategies and the actions associated with these strategies before implementation, regularly reporting risk status to key stakeholders with recommendations for appropriate strategic decisions, monitoring the efficiency and auditing and auditing risk responses for their effectiveness and documenting lessons learned. Project risk management should be included as an integral part of all other project processes. Since project risks can affect project objectives, anyone with an interest in achieving those objectives should play a role in project risk management. And the last thing to mention in this lecture, that roles and responsibilities for project risk management should be clearly defined and communicated and individuals should be held responsible and accountable for results. Also, the roles and responsibilities of risk management will be documented as part of the risk management plan.